we just bow our heads and go to the throne of grace for a moment. Hallelujah. Father God, we just thank you, God, for an opportunity to come together once again, Lord. Oh, God, we reach, Lord God. We stretch forth, Lord God, to you, God. Beyond anything and everything else, we are seeking you and seeking your face. God, we trust that, Lord God, everything that we need is in you. And we trust and believe that everything that we need shall, Lord God, be ours. As a matter of fact, it is already ours, Lord God, if we have the faith to believe it. So right now, Lord God, we declare faith to rise in the building. We declare faith to rise on the airwaves. We declare faith to rise right now, God. Whatever the need may be, we know that you will meet it. And we just thank you. And we just want to love on you for the next few moments. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We just know about the goodness of God. We thank him right now. Amen. The song simply speaks about the goodness of God. Hallelujah. How many know that God is good? He's good and he is, he is faithful. Hallelujah. He is faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we bless you. We bless you. We're waiting. We're waiting. Patiently, Jesus. Your mercy's never failed me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing of the goodness been faithful, oh yes you have, all my life you have been so, so good, with every breath that I am made for, oh I will sing of the goodness of God, I love your voice. close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been
been good to anybody has God made a way for anybody has God opened a door for anybody if it had not been for the Lord that was on your side the enemy would have swallowed you up but thanks be to God that gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ can we put our hands together one more time for Jesus all over this building amen amen we're thankful thankful to God, thankful for our band and for our worship leader for leading us into worship so beautifully once again. Amen. They do an excellent job every time we come together. Certainly, we thank God for each of you being here tonight, God. Amen. We thank God for Kendra being here tonight. Will you put your hands together for her? Amen. And my mother is here. Not only is my mother here, Kendra's mother is here tonight. Amen, and my grandmother. So we're just happy, happy, happy to have all of you here today. Amen. Amen. We're getting a little feedback, but it's okay. This is my second assignment of the day. Uh, we had to preach over at Antioch this morning uh, for Pastor Frank White, and uh, we're here tonight. So we're just doing what the Lord has called us to do. Is that all right? Amen. We're just doing what the Lord has called us to do. I had not seen that. That looks great. That looks real good. 
Amen. God bless you. We're going today to the word of the Lord, to the 40th Psalm, 40th Psalm. As God began to deal with me as to the word that we would deal with for this year, he took me to the 40th Psalm in the second verse. The Bible says, he brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet on a rock and established my goings. Somebody shout, established my goings. Establish my goings. That's what the Lord is going to do this year for you. He's going to establish your goings. He's getting ready to establish some things for you. He's getting ready to establish some things in you. He's getting ready to establish you. That's the word of the Lord this year. He's getting ready to establish you. This year, you're going to establish. And this year, he's going to establish you. Somebody shout establish. As a people, we're establishing Compass Church. But as individuals, God is calling some of you to establish something. And others of you, God is going to establish you this year. Some of you will establish and some of you will be established. The word we'll focus on this year is the word establish. Say it again, establish. Some of you, as I'm talking, already know that God is calling you for one or the other or for both of these things, to be established or to establish. Uh, this year, God is going to settle some of you. Uh, you've been moving from pillar to post, the Lord said, and your thoughts have been cloudy and you can't even think straight. God has said he's going to settle you this year. Uh, moving from house to house and can't get settled this year, God is going to establish your going. Somebody shout establish. God said he's going to stabilize you this year. He's going to bring stability to your life. Some of you haven't been stable in a long time, but God said he's going to bring some stability to your life, stability to your home, stability to your marriage, stability to your business, stability to your paycheck. This year, God is going to settle some things within you. I've come to tell somebody, put your stabilizers on because God's getting ready to stabilize you. This is a year you're going to gain stability. This is a year you're going to gain strength. This is a year God's going to stabilize your life and set your life on straight uh, my son he has a training he has training wheels on his bike and it keeps him from falling from side to side so if he wobbles from side to side it's okay the bike won't fall over because he has stabilizers on it he has training wheels on it, and that's what I heard the Lord tell me about this year that this year he's gonna put training wheels on your life so that when you rock from left to right you're not gonna fall over and you're not gonna fall off he's gonna put some stabilization in your life now unto him that's able to keep you from falling to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory majesty dominion and power both now and forever somebody shout amen amen I feel him already in here mighty early I'm sorry y'all this is my second ro ro uh, rodeo today so I'm already there <laughs> Uh, if you stay with the Lord this year, I beloved, he's going to keep you from falling. Uh, Job 23 and 11 said, my foot hath held its steps. I have kept his way and not turned aside. He's going to stabilize your home and stabilize that which pertains to you and stabilize your children. It's not going to be rocky this year if you stay with the Lord. He's getting ready to put some stabilization in your pathway. Yeah, this is your year to stand tall. This is your year to rock steady. This is your year to move forward in that which the Lord has called you to. He's getting ready to bring some stability, some stability, some settlement to your life, some settling to your home, some settling to your marriage, some settling to your family life. God is getting ready to settle that which concerns you. God's getting ready to bring a settlement to your life. I hear him now. He's getting ready to settle some things in your life. Settle some things in your home. I can't shake it. Settle some things in your mind. Settle some things in your spirit. God's getting ready to settle something that concerns you. Somebody shout settle. He's getting ready to settle some things. And I text for the year Psalm 40 and 2. David is thanking God for delivering him from what was, from what he was in. Now, this is David, so we have to consider, take into consideration who David was and that the Lord had delivered David out many times from many different things. So in this particular instance, we may not know exactly what he was being delivered from in particular in this particular psalm, but we know that he had been delivered out of something. The psalmist said God brought him out of a horrible pit. 
He brought him out of a ditch, a low place. The Bible said out of the miry clay, some sticky, muddy situations. Anybody ever had a sticky situation, a muddy situation that seemed like you couldn't get out and seemed like you couldn't make ends meet. But God brought him out of a sticky and muddy situation. He said, and set my feet on a rock. He put his feet on solid ground and established his goings. This year, God is going to establish your goings. Your steps are going to be ordered by the Lord. He's going to settle your footsteps. He's going to secure the steps that you're taking. He's going to help you to step right in the right place at the right time. While others, beloved, are trying to secure the bag, God is going to secure your steps. The world will be trying to secure the bags. God's going to secure your steps. He's going to allow you to walk places where you need to go and see things that you need to see and be in the right place at the right time to do exactly what he would have for you to do. Somebody shout glory. This is the year that you will be established and you will establish. Establishing your goings, it refers to fixing one steps. It means that God has a plan for David's life, a glorious future for him. When God establishes your steps this year, he's setting your future up. He's putting things in place. He's setting things up for, for you to meet the right people. He's putting the right contracts in place. God is setting you up to be established this year. First thing is you will be established. The Bible says 2 Chronicles 20 and 20. And they rose up early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And when they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, Judah, and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you will be established. Believe his prophets, and you will succeed. This year you have been called to move forward with what God has called you to establish. God has given you a vision. God has given you a dream. God has given you an assignment to establish something and you haven't done it yet. I'm here to tell you this is the year you need to establish what God has called you to establish. We're going to establish it not in our own strength and not in our own way, but we're going to do it God's way. We have to do it the way that God is calling for us to do it. We learn that when we look at the Ark of the Covenant. When the Ark of the Covenant, they were carrying it, and when they were carrying it, uh, they were carrying it, they were carrying it back to Jerusalem, and when they were taking it back to Jerusalem, the Bible says uh, there was a man named Uzzah. They were carrying it on a cart, and as they were carrying it on a cart, the Bible says that it slipped over, and Uzzah reached out his hand to save the Ark of the Covenant. He was doing something good. He was trying to save the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was God's holy place. It had the holy seat on the top, and it had the rod that budded when Aaron's, Aaron's rod that budded, and it had the Ten Commandments in it. And when it fell over, the Bible said that Uzzah reached out his hand to, to push it back into place. But the Bible said that when he touched it, Uzzah died. He was trying to do a good thing. He was trying to save the Ark of the Covenant. But when he touched it, he died because that was not the way God told them to do it. When we're doing things, beloved, we have to do it the way that God told us to do it. Because if you don't, it will not work. If you don't, it could cost you your life. You have to do it God's way. You have to get your direction and your instructions from God. So the, the children of Israel, when they were carrying the Ark of the Covenant, they were supposed to, and they knew that, they were supposed to carry it on their shoulders. But instead, they pulled it on a cart. And when they pulled it on a cart, that's when it slipped, and it did, and that's what caused Uzzah to lose his life. We have to do it God's way. That's why, beloved, I believe that God is calling us to a time of prayer and fasting. And I'm going to ask everybody to join me in this time of prayer and fasting that's going to start March 12th through April 2nd. 21 days of prayer and fasting. I want you to join me on these 21 days as we pray and fast and we believe God. Starting, we're going to have one more service in February, that last Sunday in February. Then starting March 12th, we're going to go every Sunday during this 21 days all the way through April 2nd. Every Sunday at five o'clock we're going to meet right here because God is calling us to do something we're going to hear from God we're going to believe God for miracles we're going to believe God for open doors and then next month when we come together we'll talk about Easter and everything forward and where we're going to be actually having church yet on Sunday mornings we'll discuss all that next time but for those 21 days I believe God's going to do something where we're going to be praying and fasting. We're not going to let up until we hear from heaven. There will be signs and wonders during this time of prayer and fasting between March 12th and April 2nd.
We believe in God for the sick to be healed, for debts to be canceled. We're going to see the mighty hand of God at work. He's going to give some of you direction that you've been asking for during this time of prayer and fasting. The Bible said, commit thy works to the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. That's what we're going to be doing during this time of prayer and fasting. We're committing our thoughts, our heart, our mind to the Lord so that he can establish us to do the work your mind to do this work your mind needs to be on the lord your mind can't be going here and there your mind has to be on the lord to do what the lord has called you to do you cannot let everything and everyone in your spirit everything can be on your mind your mind must be on the lord some of the days during this prayer and and fasting time you might have to turn the television off some of these days you might have to log off of social media some of these days you might have to to turn away from this person or that person because your mind has to be on the lord we're expecting a move of god let this mind be in you that was also in christ jesus we're believing god that we're establishing here that god's going to see it through to the end we're when you're establishing something it comes with responsibility it comes with things that you have to do it comes with responsibility are you ready to take on the responsibility of what you're establishing Are you ready to take on the responsibility of what God has called you to do? I see people all the time talking about, I'm a boss, I'm a boss, I'm a boss, I'm a boss. I'm like, they don't even know what a boss is. A boss ain't nothing to play with. When you're a boss and you have the responsibility of people, that means that when they pull on that car, when they pull on that lot and they got a new car and stuff like that, and you supposed to look happy that they got a new car, as a boss, you're thinking, oh my gosh, if I don't pay the light bill or the mortgage next month or the rent next month on this building, they won't have no car because they won't have any place to work. You, You got to be ready when God calls you to be responsible. When God calls you to be responsible for others, your mind changes, your heart changes, the things you look at, the things you think about change. They talk, you know, you're supposed to be happy that they got a new house and they got a new car and all you're thinking is, hey, that's your house and that's your car. You have to take responsibility. That's what comes with being a boss. There's a responsibility that comes with that. Are you ready for what God is calling you to? Kendra and I, we watch this online dating show purely for entertainment because it is hilarious. And a lot of the ladies get up there and they say they want a man that's 666. They say six feet tall, six figures, annual salary, and uh, whatever the other six is, I don't know. But there's this fascination that they have with making six figures until they look at the statistics and they see that 50% of the people that make six figures are living paycheck to paycheck. That's not a way of life. That's not how we want to live our lives. We don't want to live a life paycheck to paycheck. What good is it to make six figures and not be able to manage it? What's good is it to establish something and you're not able to manage it? How are you going to prepare for what God is calling you to establish, beloved? We got to put systems in place now to help us manage what is to come. I hope you got that. We have to put systems in place now to manage what God would have for for us to do. We have to put systems in place now. That might look differently for different people. We might have to pay down some personal debt now so that we can support what we're establishing later. We might have to hire somebody to do something now so that we can do something later. Whatever we're establishing, beloved, that's what we have to do. We're going to have to put things in place now because God is calling us to establish something. God is calling us to execute something. You're going to have to execute on what God is calling you to do. Number two, you will be established. First Peter 5 and 10 says, and after you have suffered a little while, The God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Beloved, this year, God is going to establish you. God is going to make your way plain. God is going to settle you. He's going to put your feet on solid ground. He's going to bring you out of that muddy place and out of that place where you can't seem to stabilize and out of the place where you can't seem to get your head together and out of the place where you can't seem to get your thoughts together. This is the year God said he's going to stabilize your home and stabilize your marriage and stabilize your children. God is getting ready to stabilize that which concerns you. 
You have to move forward with how God is establishing you. You can't be sensitive uh, and be successful. Every time somebody says something to you, every time somebody doesn't understand you, you can't always go on a campaign trying to prove to people that you are who you say you are and that you're not who they think you are. Baby, you have to move forward in who God has called you to be. I'll say it again. You can't be sensitive in this walk and determine that you're going to be successful. God is calling you to do something and everybody's not going to understand your walk. Everybody's not going to understand your talk. Everybody's not going to understand everything that God is doing in your life. But baby, you have to move forward because he's establishing something in you. Uh, He's putting you on a street called straight. This year, God is regulating your mind and regulating your heart and regulating your spirit. I feel old school. Now, he's a heart fixer and he's a mind regulator. He's a body healer. He's the bread when I'm hungry. He's the water when I'm thirsty. He's the lawyer in the in the in the in the courtroom. He's the doctor in the sick room. He's my way in, beloved, and he's my way out. I like the way the old saint said it. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. This year, God is going to establish you. That's what I heard the Lord say. He's going to establish you this year. He's getting ready to establish that which concerns you. He brought me out of the miry clay. The psalmist said he set my feet on a rock to say he put a song in my soul today, a song of praise. Hallelujah. He's getting ready to settle you. And you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaves shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper because this is the year that God is getting ready to establish you. I I heard the hymn writer say, Lord, lift me up and let me stand up by faith on heaven's table land a a higher plane than I have found Lord plant my feet on higher ground I've come to tell somebody he's going to establish you this year he's going to settle you this year you're not going to go under this year you're not going to fall over this year but God is bringing stabilization to your home he's bringing stabilization to your marriage he's bringing stabilization to your family God is bringing stabilization to your job he's bringing stabilization to your business and no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against you shall be condemned for this is our heritage for them that believe is there anybody in the building tonight that knows that God is getting ready to establish something in you is there anybody in the building tonight that knows that God is getting ready to stabilize you is there anybody in the building tonight that don't want to fall over to the left or to the right but you know God is bringing ready to bring up some stabilization to your life I've come to ask you beloved are you ready to establish up I've come to ask you are you ready to be established I've come to ask you are you ready for that door to be open are you ready for that mountain to be moved are you ready for that next relationship are you ready for that new job opportunity are you ready for that new business venture just one question for you beloved is there anything too hard for God is there anything that he can't do I've just stopped by this church tonight to tell you God is getting ready to establish you this year he's getting ready to settle you this year he's getting ready to bring some peace to that home peace to that mind peace to that spirit he's getting ready to settle that that concerns you give him a praise all over this building he's getting ready to settle you he's getting ready to settle you he's getting ready to settle that that concerns you He's getting ready to settle you. That's all I could hear. He's getting ready to establish. As we're establishing a church, God is establishing you. As we're establishing a church, God is establishing your mind. God is establishing that that concerns you. This year, you will establish. This year, you will be established. And there's no devil in hell that can stop the work of God in your life. There's nobody, no family member, no no co-worker, nobody that can stop what God is doing in your life. This year, this year, you will establish. This year, 
you will be established before the year is out you will have established what he's told you to establish or you will be established however that word works in your life God is getting ready to do something behold I will do a new thing and now it shall spring forth shall you not know it I'll even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert God will bring water to your dry places even when it seems impossible and it seems like you can't make it and it seems like what you're accomplishing just won't come to pass may God send people God will send people in your pathway that will help guide the vision that he's given you along and there's no weapon formed against you that shall prosper every single tongue that rises up against you in judgment God will condemn there is an establishing anointing in you where you will do and you will establish that which he's called you to do everyone standing if you would ask I would invite you to stand to your feet Father, in Jesus' name, God, we thank you for how you poured out on tonight. We thank you for how you have given us the word of how you're going to establish us and how this year we will be established and how this year we will establish. God, we read how David said, you brought him up out of the miry clay and you put his foot on a rock to stay and you established his goings. So God, this year, we're asking that you would establish our goings, that you would order our footsteps, that you would guide our footsteps and lead and guide us along the way. Lord, if you lead us, we can't stray. Lord, let us walk each day with you. Lead us along. Lead us, God. God, there may be one today who doesn't know you as their personal savior. If that person's in this room tonight, I'm going to ask you to come. If you're online, I'm going to, we're going to talk to you and we're going to tell you exactly what to do in just a moment. So many people say that they're coming to the Lord once they stop drinking, once they stop smoking, once they stop doing all this myriad of things. And, and that was, that's good, that sounds good, but if you could stop all of that yourself, there would be no need for Jesus in your life. He is there to be the helper. He is there to meet the need he is there to make a way for you so tonight God there's one watching right now I'm going to ask that you would pray this prayer say Lord Jesus I am a sinner and I need to be saved God I believe that you died and that you rose again on the third day with all power in your hands so by faith in your word I believe today as I have confessed with my mouth and believed in my heart that you are Jesus the Christ. You are my Lord and Savior. And so by faith in your word, I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. If you're watching right now, I want you to go to compasschurch.us. Compasschurch.us. And you, you would click join us. When you click join us, there's a message box there. I want you to tell us that you receive the Lord as your personal savior today, and we're gonna get right back in contact with you. Amen. At this time, we're gonna have Robin to come back and lead us in one more song. God bless you.
your name in the car jesus we'll praise your name so into our church today if you would you can go on to if you want to give a physical offering we have a basket here if you want to give online you can go to compasschurch.us compasschurch.us and scroll down where it says support us and there you can give an offering we're happy tonight she's not here but it, uh, we do thank God for Bishop M.S. Nesbitt who sent $500 to our service tonight we're thankful for her and Pastor Murphy wants to say something Amen. We're going to give space for him tonight to say something. But compasschurch.us, compasschurch.us. God bless you tonight. We are blessed to be here um, in support of all that God is doing in Pastor Carlton and Lady Kendra and Compass Church. Um, he preached tonight about being established and God settling us. And one thing about having settled ground, settled ground is ground you can sow into. It's ground that is fertile for seed to be planted into. And tonight, um, not only are we, we want to sow uh, and allow this burgeoning church to have a space to worship this month for free, we're also sowing a gift of $2,400 tonight into this ministry. We believe in Pastor Carlton. We believe in the vision of Compass Church. And if you're here tonight, I believe you also believe in it. And this is ground worth sowing into. And so tonight we give you this first installment of two uh, in the amount of $1,200 and the other $1,200 will be ready for you next month. Y'all give you. Pastor a hand clap. Thank you so much. Amen. That is wonderful. Amen. Amen. It's beautiful how the pastors have just been sowing uh, into the vision and the work that we're doing here. Uh, pray for us this week. Um, our church is not an independent church. We are a part of an organization called Converge. And so uh, Pastor John K. Jenkins is the president of our organization and we are having our meeting this month, this week in Orlando, Florida. So pray for Kendra and I as we prepare to go down there and meet with our other churches that are part of our organization. So uh, that'll be happening this week. So um, we're just believing God, we're believing God. And, that even as we get ready to go on into the next phase, and I know I've already let the cat out of the bag as to where we're gonna be worshiping and stuff, but as we go on into the next phase, I ask that you would just keep us in prayer. Keep this lifted in prayers. And as we begin to pray and fast between March 12th and April 2nd, believing that God is going to do something great, that God is gonna send souls that will need to be saved, and that they will get saved and that they will have a mind to work in the church. That God is going to do something great in this city. We already have the leaders of the city are back in this project. They believe in what we're doing. So we're just believing God that what he's already set out for us to do, we're going to accomplish that task. Amen. If you do have an offering after we dismiss, you can bring it up here. If, or you can go online to compasschurch.us. Everyone standing, thank you all for coming out tonight. Being a part of what we're doing here at Compass Church. God, we thank you for time well spent. We thank you for how you have poured out on tonight. We thank you as we feel your presence even now, God. We ask that you would encamp your angels around every vehicle. Arrive to our destination safely. Let us feel refreshed and revived when we wake up in the morning. God, we pray for a good week, a week filled with your presence, a week filled with your power, a week filled with your glory. Bless us and keep us as in Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. And the Lord give you peace in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.